watching PA Harness Week Racing's fastest paced half hour. In this next half hour, we're going to talk to some of the big drivers in the sport, show you the biggest races of the week, and of course, let you in on all of the big action. I'm Charlotte McBride, joined by Heather Vitale. Hey, Charlotte. You know what? If action is on everyone's to-do list today, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking that they came to the right place. We do have a great half hour in store. Here's what you can expect to see in the next 30 minutes. A Pennsylvania bread takes the $1 million Pepsi North America Cup. We've got the exciting race to show you. Plus more from the Great Northeast Open Series. And we'll talk to driver David Miller about the importance of this series. And Pennsylvania harness racing is the best in the country. Driver Larry Stahlbaum tells us all about it. And we have our final segment of our three-part series on horse racing and our PA economy. That and much more is next on Racing's Fastest Pace Half Hour. We are kicking off this week's show with our race of the week. We're going to Mohawk Park in Canada for the million dollar Pepsi North America Cup. A huge race on tap there. The elimination winners were working on a mystery and better's wish. Here's announcer Kid Middleton with the call. Jink right at the front with Captain Victorious, but Captain Crunch presses on. Sweeping up on the outside, Better's Wish into third now, and fourth away at the rail, left out of Flame Hanover. Teachrick already up and driving with working on a mystery from in fifth now. Sixth to the outside is Delos Yellow's Deo as he backpedals, tries to find a seat. Best in show, just to his inside, drives through. Then it's back to Tiger Hanover. Hurricane Emperor, Stag Party trailing. 26 flat, they sizzled that first quarter, and Dunn has made the front as Better's Wish takes them up to Towards the midway point, parked and pressing, is working on a mystery. Back into third is Captain Crunch with a ringside seat to the early battle. Captain Victorious fourth now, fifth and up on the move from the backfield. Best in show, scooting through is a flame. Hanover then sweeping to the outside goes to Los Yellow Dale. Final three are Tiger Hanover Stag Party and Hurricane Emperor. 52 and 4, a wild first half as working on a mystery. Paid a hefty price to get the front, and he's under pressure now from Captain Crunch, who's coming on. Right there, third is Better's Wish in the pocket spot with cover Captain Victorious to fourth now. Then a flame Hanover buried sixth, seventh to the outside, best in show. They're at three quarters in 120 flat, and they're into the stretch. And it's working on a mystery. Still there at the rail. Captain Crunch on the outside, trying to get by him. Captain Crunch on the outside to the front now. Squeezing through between comes Better's Wish. In at the rail, it's working on a mystery. Eighth of a mile to go. Cup 36, and Captain Crunch is clear. Captain Crunch and Zeron with a rebound score in the Pepsi North America Cup. Captain Crunch jumped a shadow in his elimination and rallied back to finish fifth. He made the final, but all of his supporters seemed to jump off the bandwagon, and he proved them wrong with an explosive 147-2 Canadian Canadian record. He was absolutely phenomenal. Now, he is a PA bred son of Captain Treacherous. He's trained by Nancy Johansson. He was last year's two year old Colt of the Year in the United States, and he's looking fine in 2019. Now, Better's Wish was second, working on a mystery was third. And we have to give props to a flame Hanover. Trained by one of our PA girls, Linda Shadle. He was the longest shot on the board, 136 to 1, and he was fourth. So congratulations to him. Now, this is Scott Zeron's very first Pepsi North America Cup, and we're going to check in with him and Greg Blanchard in Victory Lane. It's a uh, track, stakes, Canadian record in the Pepsi North America Cup, one of the most thrilling editions uh, we've seen in recent memory. Scott Zeron, you said this was on your bucket list, and uh, now you've done it. How does it feel? It feels unbelievable. This has been the end all be all for me. It's completed my entire bucket list and uh, we've got lots of racing left to do, but I can't say enough about how amazing this animal is to, I didn't want to be in that spot I was in in that race, but at the same time he overcame it. It's just his greatness. I screamed like the whole last eighth. I was just screaming. Grand Circuit Racing moves from the Great White North bag over the border to the Keystone State because tonight is Sun Stakes Eliminations evening at the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. Captain Crunch will not be there because he has his next date on the racetrack for the Meadowlands Pace Eliminations. He's taking a little break right now, but the night is no less star-studded. We've got Charlotte's favorite horse at the Downs tonight, and that's a worry you beaut. Yep, you yes. <laughs> uh, the trotter everybody's talking about, Green Shoe, and the 2018 Harness Horse of the Year, Mick Wicked. 
they're all at the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono tonight. Now, of course, the eliminations are tonight. That means the finals next week, June 29th. I'm telling you, be there. Two words, be there. I know I'll be. <laughs> we do have to take a quick break, but we have a lot more coming up. When we come right back, we're going to go to Harris, Philadelphia, check out the action there and the great Northeast Open Series, as well as talk to driver David Miller about the importance of these fantastic series of races. On the far outside, Schnitzel do something with proper one, trying to spring the upset. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier, and the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer. And you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. Watching at PA Harness Week. We're going to check out some of the great action from Harris, Philadelphia this week. We're starting with race number seven in the Great Northeast Open Series. This one for Open Pacers. The purse, $30,000. Two horses I want you to check out in this one. The number two horse, Tiger Thompson, the favorite, made most money in this group so far this season. And then the number five horse, Proper One. He's up in class, but super game lately with two wins and two seconds out of his last four races. Tiger Thompson about to feel some pressure. Pressure from Rock and Run, the millionaire pacer moves up to the saddle pad. Scott Rocks is third, outside proper one is well positioned fourth. Schnitzel do something third up, three quarters, 120 and four. Inside Crockett's calling is no place to go. Midpoint of the final turn, Tiger Thompson has the lead. Rock and Run on the outsides grinding. Scott Rocks awaits clearance, proper one. Here Schnitzel do something, roused by Callahan, fanning four wide. They straighten away, done imploring Tiger Thompson. Scott Rocks up the inside on the far outside, Schnitzel. Do something with proper one, trying to spring the upset. Proper one inside Scott Rock. Schnitzel do something. Proper one at 19 to 1. Tiger Thompson had a tough go at it the first quarter in 25 and 1. And then he is pressured by the super classy Rock and Ron. While all this is going on, proper one's just sitting back. He ends up busting home and takes the win in 149 flat. That's a new lifetime mark for the Carlo Palacino trainee. Scott Rocks was second. Schnitzel do something. Took third. Now getting back to the winner proper one pays a whopping 40 bucks to win so we checked in with hall of famer david miller who is in the sulky david we just saw you win with proper one in a great northeast open series race here at harris philadelphia uh, this is a really great series isn't it oh yeah i agree you know it's uh it's a great great race for horses that aren't staked to uh, any stake races and uh it's a guaranteed purse of 30 every week, and they go for a rich final. And I love seeing the older horses race because so many people look at the two and three year olds, you know? Yeah, you know, uh, it, it, it is. It's a good series for uh, your overnight horses that are, you know, the top horses. And, uh, you know, it, and it, it's, a, uh, it's a good series. You know, like I said, it goes every week for 30, and then I think the final was uh, 100, I believe. And it's, it's just a great race. Okay, now, keeping on that open series subject, tonight at the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono, it is Sun Stakes Saturday elimination night, but there is an open series race for the Pacers, and you're on courtly choice who won the Commodore Barry here. Yeah, you know, it, there again, it, it's a good race for, for him, you know. Uh, uh, he, he has the graduate, which I think is next weekend. They needed a race for him, and it, it's a perfect uh, spot opportunity for him, and uh, that's just another reason why that's a good series. Staying right here with the action at Harris, Philadelphia, we're going to race a number 10 for conditioned trotters at four years and under. This purse, $14,000. Well, I want you to take a look at one horse. The number four horse, Jumalay Mass, is the better's choice at four to five for trainer Irv Miller. And watch out for the long shot in this one. Higgs Bozen, a PA bred son of explosive matter, starts from post position one. Cayenne victory with the lead, getting all sexy on the outside. Jumalay Mass. Is third. El Cruz hustling to catch up with cover. Three.
three quarters, 126 and four. Higgs boasted is no place to go. Fifth, safe word is sixth, and now EL Cruz drips down three wide. Top of the stretch, Cayenne Victory getting all sexy, coming back again. Outside EL Cruz now moves up towards the inside. Jubilee Mass, they straighten away. Cayenne Victory trying to kick away. Here is EL Cruz storming down the center. Up the inside, Jubilee Mass. Higgs boasted's now on the far outside. Jubilee Mass, EL Cruz far outside. Higgs boasted down to the finish. Higgs boasted center. Got him. I got to hand it to announcer Mike Bozich. I don't know how he gets through a race with one horse's <laughs> name being getting all sexy and then another <laughs> horse's name in the race being safe word. And he does it with a straight face. I know, right? I so, can't even yeah, listen I know. to it with a straight face. If you know anything about Fifty Shades of Grey out there, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So anyway, <laughs> the winner was Higgs Bozich. And he comes from out of the blue. He picks up the victory in 157 and one. Um, oh my gosh, another sweet payoff here. $34 to win. The four year old trotter is trained by David Wiest. And Sharla actually caught up with the driver, Larry Stahlbaum, about how great Pennsylvania harness racing is. Well, as we know, Pennsylvania is such a great state to race in. What do you love about racing here in Pennsylvania? Oh, I, I just love it. You know, this is where I live. I live in Pennsylvania. I'm a Pennsylvania resident. You know, here especially, we get to go home, be at home at night. It's big plus, big, big plus, you know. Both tracks are, you know, good. Pocono's in here both, you know, and I just want to concentrate. I just moved back down here, and I want to concentrate just racing here. Well, the action's hot here at Harris, Philadelphia, so we are staying with it. We're going to race number 13, four condition pacers. This one for five years old and under. The purse here, $16,000. Two horses to take a look at in this one. The number seven, Nutcracker Sweet, is the one to five favorite in his 2019 debut. And the one that I like, the number five horse, hands off my chips, finished second in New York in his last race and returns to PA for this one. Nutcracker Sweet opens up now. Captain Penko moves into second. Berserker drops back third. Outside, hands off my chips fourth. Three quarters, 122 and four. Top of the stretch now. Nutcracker Sweet still has the lead. Captain Penko racing in second on the outside. Hands off my chips. Looks the rally on. Berserker drops back as they straighten away. Nutcracker Sweet turns first. Captain Penko on the outside. Moving out widest. Here's hands off my Chips, that cracker sweet Captain Penko. Hands off my chips, trying to spring it up. Said Crimson and Chrome from way back. They come down to the finish. It's tight for win. Maybe hands off my chips. There were three right there at the wire, but it was hands off my chips. So winning by a whisker in 151 and four with driver Vic Kirby. The horse is trained by Scotty D. Domenico. Second was Crimson and Chrome. Nutcracker Sweet was third. Now, not only was this a really close race, but hands off my chips paid $23 to win. You know, the co owner of this horse is JEF Enterprises, mm -hmm. and they name their horses like you got hands off my chips. <laughs> Hands off my cupcake, hands off my cookie, hands off my brownie, and I can't even tell you any more names because now I'm hungry. Now I'm hungry. So grab a snack, sit tight, stay with us. We do have to take a quick break, but when we come right back, we are going to head up to the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono for some racing there, and we'll catch in with the great Northeast Open Series as well. And you'll see part three of our series on how horse racing helps the Pennsylvania economy. Mac Lobel, and he's pouring it on. It's Niatros by four, and he's going away. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, a place where heroes come to life, preserving harness racing's treasured past while promoting its exciting future. And now get ready to harness your excitement with the thrill of Harness Racing's 3D Simulator. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, now offering free admission. Bigger, better, bolder than ever. Welcome back. You're watching PA Harness Week, Racing's Fastest Pace Half Hour. It's now time for our last segment of a three-part series on how horse racing here in Pennsylvania helps the economy. The Pennsylvania horse racing industry has a tremendous economic impact in the Commonwealth. Yes, thousands of people are employed at the state's six thoroughbred and standardbred racetracks. Trainers, grooms, jockeys, drivers, betting tellers, blacksmiths, veterinarians, and many others are employed at Pennsylvania's racetracks. But the economic impact of Pennsylvania's thoroughbred and standardbred horse racing and breeding industry is much, much broader. 
To gain support from rural legislators for legalized gambling, track operators agreed to allocate a portion of their slot's revenues to increase incentives for horse breeders and boost racing purses. Those breeder incentives and higher purses have attracted many new breeders to the state. Today, the number of thoroughbred and standardbred horse breeders in Pennsylvania has grown to more than 2,500. One of those new breeding farms is Diamond Creek. Originally based in Kentucky, Diamond Creek opened a facility in Pennsylvania in 2012. Twelve people are employed full-time at the 200-acre standardbred horse farm in York County. The way the Pennsylvania um, breeders' funds and everything was, was um, coming up, we realized that this was a really great place for us to have our mares. Farms like Diamond Creek serve as economic drivers in their local community as well. I definitely think we have an impact. We are a huge, we're in a very small town. Wellsville is fairly small. We do try to use locally um, sourced companies. And everything you really think of, if there's a local um, way we can get it, we do try to do that. We believe in supporting the community as a whole. Pennsylvania is basically where you want to be in standard red racing. And primarily we've got um, some of the best purses out um, in the industry. And then Basically, if you are a stallion, you want to be able to stand in Pennsylvania. It's where all the best um, stallions are standing, and we certainly think that we've got um, the best stallion shed uh, around in the industry, one, and then definitely within Pennsylvania, for sure. Construction and maintenance of horse barns and stables has created significant business for companies like King's Construction, based in New Holland. The company specializes in construction of equine facilities. We started 40 years ago. Uh, by my brother and I and by a small job and he got one horse barn in uh, Penn National. From there on is where the equestrian um, work had all taken off to where Kings has built up to today. Our business has expanded especially in the type of buildings that we've been doing meaning more higher end um, very uh, unique type buildings versus what we had done 20 years ago. According to economic studies, Pennsylvania horse racing and breeding delivers a $4 billion economic impact and employs more than 20,000 people in the state. No matter what jurisdiction you go to, it's going to mean jobs. It's going to mean employment for people. But the economic impact and job creation is likely far greater. The equine industry supports hundreds of farms throughout the state that supply hay, feed and straw. Pennsylvania's racing and breeding industry has also spurred growth for manufacturing and construction companies like Farmco, EV Trailers, King's Construction, and many others. So the next time you visit a racetrack, keep in mind that the racing industry is a major driver of the state's economy, with thousands of Pennsylvanians who rely on the continued success of horse racing for their livelihood. All right, now it's time to get back to the track. We're going to head to the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono for race number eight in this one, a race for 30,000 to 40,000 claimers. The purse in this one at $20,000, two horses to take a look at in this one. The number eight horse, Attaboy Dan, getting the most respect at the windows with Georgie Knapp. And the number Number two horse, sometimes a winner, obviously hoping to be a winner in this one. Race super last time out and just missed winning by a head. Second panel, Matt Kakali cutting grand priority loose, and he leads now by two. At the moment, Attaboy Dan, the only one staying close. Ear plugs out there. Big gap back to third, and Kiwi Ideal on the outside trying to move up first over. Beach Memories is still seven back, and then fifth, Concur. Well, outside sixth now is sometimes a winner, and the trailer, our Regal Ideal, and grand priority still a solid edge. Three quarters, 121 and four, 27 and two. Third panel right now. Grand priority pacing on ice, but still staying around. Attaboy Dan to the outside. Late move by Beach Memories, and sometimes a winner coming on as well. Top of the stretch. Kakali calling on grand priority. Widening on the outside. Attaboy Dan is moving up. And on the far outside, sometimes a winner coming on. Attaboy Dan, but sometimes a winner has him measured. Thank you so much to Jim Bavilia for that call. Sometimes a winner comes from the back of the pack. Paces home the fastest, gets up in the final step. He crosses the wire in 150 and three. That's actually a career best for him. Now the winner is owned by Renee Allard, who actually is also the conditioner. And Renee was the number one trainer at the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono last season. In the driver's seat is Renee's brother. That's Simon Allard. Attaboy Dan was a close second. Grand priority. He did the work on the front. He had to settle for third.
And we're going to stay at the Downs and Mohegan Sun Pocono, going to race number 10 in this one in the Great Northeast Open Series for Open Trotters. The purse in this one, $30,000. Two horses to take a look at. The number five horse, Homicide Hunter, of course, the fastest trotter in history, won a division in this series a couple races back. And the number one horse, Rich and Miserable, has won six out of eight starts this year. Rich and Miserable leading it now by a length and a half over Muscle Diamond. Such an angel first over for Matt Kakali on the attack and quickly coming up on the leader. Moonshiner Hanover is fourth and four back. Then LaGrange, six there is mass production. Homicide Hunter still well back. Such an angel. New leader here. Slight edge on Rich and Miserable trying to hold his position. Three quarters, 123 and one, 28 and one on the back stretch. Outside, such an angel. Inside, Rich and Miserable. Muscle Diamond has dropped three back there in third. He's fading out of it. LaGrange wanted to come up, get stopped up there. Top of the stretch, and now Rich and Miserable has the lead back from Such an Angel. It's Rich and Miserable by a half length. Such an Angel not giving way, still fighting hard. Rich and Miserable, the lead. Rich and Miserable will do it again. It's six in a row. Rich and Miserable. I suppose oh. <laughs> that's possible, right? Seems kind of like an oxymoron no. to me, but whatever. <laughs> Great effort by the horse. Um, he's on top by the stands and then takes on such an angel who's first up. Tyler Buter is in the bike for this win in 151 and 3. Todd Buter, who's actually Tyler's brother, I feel like we have a brother theme going yeah. on today's <laughs> show. Uh, so Todd is the trainer. This horse not only equals his career best, but it's also the fastest trotting mile at the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono this year, and it's a national season's best so far. Pretty impressive because it was over a sloppy track. Such an angel took second. Muscle Diamond picked up the show spot. Staying right here at the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono, race number 11 for Condition Pacers. This one for five years old and under. The purse, $15,000. Two horses to take a look at in this one. The number six horse, odds on Boca Raton. The better's choice at three to five. He's been doing great in our PA Stallion Series. And the number eight horse, Branquino, has made over 100 grand in five starts already this year. A better beach has locked up right now with Branquino, right in behind odds on Boca Raton. Three quarters, 122 and four, 28 even, third panel. Branquito by just a nose, a better beach gamely fighting on. And uh, inside, uh, odds on Boca Raton is about a length and a half away and moving up closer. Well back to fourth and all go no o. Oh. Top of the stretch, Branquino still there by a length and a quarter. Now into the passing lane, rallying his odds on Boca Raton. But Branquino is solid up front by a half length. Odds on Boca Raton will not get by. We've got Tyler Buter back in the winner's circle. Actually, Tyler won four races on this single car at the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono. This time it's with Bran Quino, or we're thinking maybe Bran Quino. We're not sure. We're still working on Yeah, yeah. We don't know if he's named maybe after the famous Brazilian soccer player or after the very rare Pokemon. So I got to talk to owner trainer Ray Schnicker about that and find out about his name and, and where it came from. Anyway, the pacer race is great. He's parked the first half of the mile, makes the top, and then he's pressured, still prevails. One 50 and four, huge mile, odds on Boca Raton was second, and then a better beach was third. Well, we know it's the weekend and you want to relax and you don't want to think too much, but we do have one trivia question for you, so you might have to think a little bit. Well, we just saw a Ray Schnicker horse win, right? Okay, so we're going to keep it on the subject of Schnicker. Right. Ray Schnicker trained the 2008 <laughs> United States Trotter of the Year. What was his name? Hmm. All right. Think about it. We do have to take our final break for this half hour. Stay with us, though. We have a great blast from the past when we come right up. You don't want to miss it. And we'll wrap up another exciting week of harness racing. It's all next. Another goal. It's a great start. Breaking point gets away on top. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier, and the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer, and you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. 
to PA Harness Week, racing's fastest pace half hour. If you want to catch some of that action live, up close, in person, here is where you can go this week to see all of the races. At the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono, live harness racing Saturday and Sunday with a post time of 7 p.m. Monday and Tuesday, the first race starts at 4 p.m. And at Harris, Philadelphia, there is a special Saturday card today, June 22nd, with a post time of 2.05. And Sunday racing has a first race post of 12.40 p.m. Then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the first race post time is at 12.25. Earlier I asked, Ray Snicker trained the 2008 United States Trotter of the Year, so what was his name? It was a Dewey, Cheatham & Howe, named after the fictional law firm, Dewey, Cheatham & Howe, right? Now this is a great story because this horse actually was orphaned as a baby. He went on to win $3.1 million, lots of big races, including the Hamiltonian. Not only that, he was a triathlete. He was exercised traditionally like we do in harness racing with jogging and everything, but Ray also swam the horse and he rode under saddle on Dewey, Cheatham & Howe. And now we're going to our blast for the past, going all the way back to June of 1979, the Battle of Brandywine for three-year-old Pacers. It's Roy Shutt with a call on this one and a purse of $100,000. On the outside, Sun Sam under a drive. Mostest Yankee coming on the outside. Here comes Hot Hitter on the outside, and he is flying. Sun Sam on the front end. Breaking Point is coming to him. Sun Sam and Breaking Point. Sun Sam stays in there. Sun Sam, the son of the great Albatross, wins in 157-4 with driver George Schulte. Now, it's worth noting that when Sun Sam was two years old, he was syndicated for a record $6 million by Wall Street executive and horseman Lou Guida. That was, like, record-breaking. Now, after two seasons, Sun Sam did retire and went to Stallion. Now, here are his stats, though. He had 22 wins out of 31 starts and he made 820 grand during those two years on the track. You can always check us out on social media. On Twitter, check us out at PA Harness Week. On Facebook, you can check us out at Harness Week. And of course, you can always watch us on YouTube. Oh, oh my gosh, don't forget. Also, you want to be following the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono on Twitter with that little cute little at sign, right? Downs at MSP. And it's Sun Stakes Saturday. Yep. Eliminations tonight. The final is in one week. So join the conversation with the hashtag. This is so easy. Hashtag Sun Stakes Saturday. <laughs> it's very easy. We've had a great time in this half hour. Thanks so much for watching it right here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. We'll see you here next week. Thank <laughs> you.